the Joe Rogan experience. But check this out, though. Um, our relationship would grow and grow. And eventually, um, Mr. Kelly, you oh, know, Jesus. Be, yeah. What do you got there? He, he, he began. He He'd began. Give you a robes and yeah. put your song sneak right in. Yeah, he began. Don't um, take the hood off. Believing. Whoa, that's him right there in that photo with you? That's him right there that's in his Grand Dragon robe. This is uh, his Imperial Wizard robe. Whoa. Right here. And um, He gave you his robe? Gave me his robe because he no longer believes in what it stands for. Wow. And, um, and how many years did it take? It? There it is. How uh -huh. many years did it take before you, just by being around um, him and talking to him? For him, it was probably like around... Maybe six and a half, seven. Six and a half, seven now, years. Now, some, some it's, it's a matter of months, a matter of a year, two years. And so what do you do? Do you just talk? Is that the hat? That's the hood, yeah. Oh, Jesus. And you see, this, is, this top part is the hood, and this uh, lower portion here is what's called the, the mask. And mm. members who want anonymity, they don't want you to know who they are. They wear this mask, which is attached by three snaps or Velcro. Just remove it. Mm. They don't care, and the face is exposed, as you saw in that picture. Um, so what? what is it like? You said you guys got closer. You said you became more and more friends. You started visiting each other. Yeah. And did he ever say, you know, I'm starting to think this is bullshit? Yeah, pretty how, much. How did he say it? Um, he called me up one day, and he told me, uh, I, I got something I, I want to talk to you about. And I said, okay. And he goes, you, you want to meet for dinner? I said, sure. So I drove up to Frederick and met him, and he sat me down. He said, "You know, um, I'm quitting the clan. I'm leaving it." And he's the top dog. He's the top dog. He gave it all up. And here's the thing: um, he did a smart thing. He did a good thing. He didn't hand it down. He shut it down. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know. Did he convince the other people in the clan that? Well, they had their choice to do whatever, whatever they wanted to do. Right. A lot of them left. A lot of them left as well. Uh, then there were those who tried to keep it going, but you know, but failed. Did he use uh, you as an example when he was speaking to them? They they knew why he he did it. Uh, he received some hate mail. He began receiving some hate mail from from some of his own members anonymously. The same kind of hate mail that at one time he would send out to people mm. anonymous was now come back to him. You know, uh, you know you, you're in bed with Daryl Davis. You're a nigger lover. All that kind of stuff. Unsigned. Mm. You know, the same stuff that he would put out to other people. Uh, and so he, be, he began seeing himself in the mirror. You understand? Mm. So that was, uh, that was very crucial. Um, and and I, I, I have repeated this process many times with different people. Um, do what it, what is the process? Do you, when, like when you're talking about like the Charles Murray stuff, the bell curve stuff, how do you refute that? What are you saying to him? I'm saying to him, look, Mr. Murray, anytime you want to prove something, you find something that fits your narrative. Yes. You can find some, some black person who has a very low IQ. Okay. If, if, if I'm going to, if, if I work for Ford, and, 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 I want, and I want to prove that my car is better than Chevrolet, then I'm going to find a Chevrolet that doesn't, that doesn't run very well. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it that way. So I, I refuted Mr. Murray's and, and his, uh, his partner, the two guys who wrote the book, um, uh, their, their, their documentation. And, and, I'll, and see, they, they, they go by things that they can see and understand. I'm going to give you an example of something that, that, that's going to uh, help you understand. The Cyclops was riding around in my car one day with me. He's sitting in my passenger seat, right? And we're driving. I'm driving along. And somehow we got on the topic of, uh, of black crime. And he made a statement. He said, well, you know, you know we all know uh, they say that, you know, again, that they authority yeah. say that, um, that uh, black people have a gene in them that makes them violent. And I'd heard that before from other Klan people. You know, that's, that's one of their narratives. And, uh, you know, the wild black savage kind of thing. And uh, I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, who's doing all the drive-bys and carjackings in Southeast? He was referring to Southeast Washington, D.C., which is a predominantly black area. Some whites live there. It's predominantly black, very high crime ridden. I said, okay. 
It's black people. I said, but that's what lives there. I said, who's doing all the crime in Bangor, Maine? White people, because that's what lives there. I said, you know, you're not even considering the demographics. He's like, no, 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 no. You, you all have this gene, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's going to shut me down. And um, I said, look, he's right here. I said, look, I'm as black as anybody you know. I said, I have never done a drive-by. I have never done a carjacking. How do you explain that? This man did not wait one second. He answered me like that. He said, your gene is latent, hasn't come out yet. <laughs> How do you argue with somebody who's that far in the field, right? I mean, you can't even bite into that and chew on it, right? So I'm dumbfounded, and I'm speechless. I'm just driving along. He's over here all smug, you see, nothing to say. So I thought about it, and I said, you know, they say, I use his, his authority, I said, they say that all white people have a gene that makes them a serial killer. He's like, well, how do you figure that? I said, name me three black serial killers. He couldn't do it. I said, here, I'm going to give you one. I named one for him. I said, here, just, just name me two. He couldn't do it. I said, Charles Manson, Jeffrey Dahmer, Henry Lee Lucas, John Wayne Gacy, Albert DeSalvo, the Boston Strangler, Ted Bundy, uh, uh, David Berkowitz, Son of Sam. Ed Gein. Henry All, Lee Lucas. Ed Gein, right. Ed Gein and his crazy machine. He's a skin people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, son, they're all white. <laughs> you, you're a serial killer. <laughs> it's latent. <laughs> yeah. And, and he said, well, Daryl, I've never killed anybody. I said, your genius latent hasn't come out yet. Oh. He, goes, he goes, well, that's stupid. I said, well, duh. I said, you're right. It is stupid. I said, but it's no more stupid for me to say that about you than what you said about me. And he got very quiet. But, I mean, you could almost see it, Joe. His wheels were, like, spinning. Yeah. And um, he's thinking about it. And then he changed the subject. But within four or five months, he left the Klan. Wow. Based on that conversation. Wow. And his robe was the very first robe I ever got. Wow. Yeah. So he came to you and gave you the robe. He said... That well, conversation he, so he, with you? No, for, no, first he said, he, uh, no, he didn't come to me and give me the robe. He's, uh, he called me, and, um, and he, uh, he, uh, I was going to be up in that, in that area. And, he, and uh, he said, you want, you want to get together? And I got together with him. And he wanted to go over to the courthouse for something. Uh, he'd been in some kind of trouble. He wanted to go pick up something from the courthouse. So I gave him a ride over there. And he told me he was, he was going to quit the Klan. You know? And he, he thought a lot about what I'd said. And um, I said, what are you going to do with your stuff? He said, trash it. I said, I said, no, nah, nah, don't, 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 don't trash it. I said, give it to me. And he says, you want my, you want my robe and all my clan stuff? And I said, yeah. He goes, why? Why would you want that? I didn't know why, but something told me, just take it, Daryl, just take it. Um, and I said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I said, I said yeah, I, I do want it. So we went back to his apartment. Now, I'd never been in his apartment because I'd met him outside, outside in the driveway or whatever, a parking lot. And he said, come on in. And uh, so I, I'm walking up the stairs with him to the apartment. I'm thinking, you know, I hope I'm not getting set up here, mm. <laughs> you know. But I walked on in, and his fiance was sitting on the couch, Klan's woman. I'd seen her before. And I uh, sat down and talked with her, and he went down the hall to his room, and he came back. When he came back, he got a hefty trash bag, went back there again, and came back with this trash bag all loaded up. Had his robe, his hood. A clan belt buckle. They have a clan belt buckle. Oh, Yo, yeah, they got, got clan tie clips, all kinds of stuff, man. And um, uh, his certificate of membership, um, all kinds of stuff in this bag, and gave it to me. And um, I said, okay, thank you, you know. And I, I didn't know why I wanted it, but I just knew I should have it. Uh, well, first of all, it's history, okay? Um, and you don't destroy history. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the shameful is still American history. And the KKK, I've said it before, is as American as baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet. You know, it's, it's a shameful part of our history, but it is our history nonetheless. Now I know what I'm doing with stuff. Uh, I got my 501c3. I'm going to have a museum one day and put all this stuff in there. Wow. But, What's uh, a 501c3? Is that... It makes you tax exempt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> KKK Conversion Museum. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have uh, pictures of you with the dudes right next to their robe in each oh, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's not, amazing. Uh, uh, m most of them. Most of them I do. And so um, I began collecting all this kind of stuff. Um, 
This is, well, here, I'll show you this one. This is a uh, Grand Dragon robe. Um, green is the sign for the Grand Dragon. And uh, there you go. Got little oh. Confederate flags here, you know, clan patches. Whose is that? Who gave you that? This guy, Bob White, Robert White. Robert White used to be the Grand Dragon of Maryland for another clan group, which was a rival to Roger Kelly's group. All right. Um, when I uh, when I first heard of Bob White, I was in my late teens, and um, he I heard I heard about him on the news. He had been busted, arrested, and uh, put in jail uh, for conspiring to bomb a synagogue in Baltimore up on Liberty Road, the Liberty Road uh, synagogue. And uh, <clears throat> he was convicted. He went to prison for four years. This is before I started writing the book. All the time, so I, I just remembered him. And then uh, he got out after doing his time, continued running the Klan, and then some years later, he got busted again. Assault with intent to murder two black men with a shotgun. All right? Now, understand something. As a Klan leader, you don't make any money, or not a lot, unless you're embezzling money from the dues. And a lot of people do that. That's what causes these splinter groups. Um, if you're a leader, like a wizard or a dragon, you might get like a small stipend out of the dues, but not enough to pay your rent or put food on your table. So you have to have a regular job. You know, Cyclops, wizard, dragon, whatever, these are all just titles, like Boy Scout leader. You have to have a regular job to pay your rent and mortgage. This man's regular job, when he was doing all this nonsense, uh, bombing places and stuff, Baltimore City Police Officer. Whoa. This is his police officer uniform, okay? Yeah. He was not an undercover cop in the Klan gathering intelligence. He was a bona fide Klansman on the Baltimore City Police Force, okay? Uh, and there are more. There are more, okay? Um, but he went on. He, this guy was vehemently, vehemently anti-Semitic and racist and very, very violent. Um, but he went on to become one of my best friends. And um, he gave me his Klan robe, gave me his police uniform. I, you know, I do a lot of lecturing all over the country and stuff. Did he quit the police force? Uh, he was forced to quit the police force or be fired. The police force, Baltimore City Police Force, I mean, e even just last year, they, they had a consent decree from the uh, Department of Justice against them. They are very racist and very corrupt. Um, what they would do is they would turn a blind eye to the Klansmen on the force. Because, you know, it, as, as a police officer, you're not allowed to belong to any subversive groups. All right. They would turn a blind eye as long as the guys would not bring unwarranted attention to the, to the department. Mm. You know, just keep, keep your stuff, you know, whatever. Well, you know, he, 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 would, he, he would end up getting busted for, for planting a bomb near a synagogue and, uh, and, you know, firing a shotgun and all that kind of stuff at black people. Um, so they, they, you know, they gave him, you know, hey, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta retire or, or be put off the force. Uh, you know, you're, you're causing us too much uh, publicity. This was before he left the Klan? Yeah. So what yeah. did he do after he did that? Well, uh, he, he had to get another job while he was He got another job. He began um, dealing in uh, homing pigeons. <laughs> hey, that's, well, hey, dude, that's a these people have to work, man. These ridiculous people. way to transmit information. It's perfect for someone who's in something like the clown. But um, you know, I mean, you you have to work. Yeah.